Hello and welcome to The Pulse. In part two of today's show, controversies on the campus. One involving a proposed compulsory student exchange programme on the mainland, the other about not-so-polite language. First, though, an explosion in a car repair shop in Wan Tai Sin last Sunday left three people dead and nine injured. It also brought to the fore concerns about the safety of liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG, as stored in garages throughout Hong Kong. The car repair shop that was destroyed had been there for 15 years. It mainly serviced liquefied petroleum gas, or LPG, taxi. It is suspected that the blast was caused by gas leak. The explosion was presumably triggered by a spark from a lighter that set off the deadly blasts. Officials reported that after the explosion, the taxi inside the shop still had its tan intact. Other than one big blast, there were a series of explosions causing a fire lasting for three hours. In the garage, there are a few uh, products which it will be used in a repair shop, like the oxyethylene, the painting, some of the solvent for cleaning the, uh, the engine, and uh, as well as uh, this uh, sort of what we call the Theon gas for the air conditioning. Although the LPG is one, when we look at it, this is not a small explosion, it is quite a big one. That means the accumulation of the unknown gas should be even bigger. 我們也希望政府在入邊的維修、或者它儲存的物料、或者有什麼壓縮器等等 vehicles were introduced to Hong Kong in 2000 as a way of curbing pollution. By 2013, some 99% of taxis on Hong Kong roads were using LPG. 200 of the 2,700 garages in Hong Kong mainly repair taxis and minibuses. Most of them are not licensed to store LPG canisters, nor do they have mechanics who are certified to handle LPG vehicles. However, many taxi drivers use these non-approved garages. These vehicle repair shops are a common sight in low rent residential areas such as Wang Tai Sin, Kun Tong, Chok Wan, and Kwai Chung. The 29 workshops, which are licensed to provide services for LPG vehicles, supervised by qualified mechanics, are located in non residential areas as part of their license requirements. <laughs> 它儲存太多自然的物體,包括天拿水、污染物或者可能有風梅樽等等。我覺得這件事會構成市民大眾沒有安心。Taxi driver who does not want to appear on camera spoke to us off camera. 政府最好就是附屋地出來給做的士的車房 the police force has been criticised mostly by pan Democrats for bypassing LegCo's financial oversight by bundling the $27 million purchase of three water cannon tanks in this year's budget. Critics have also warned that these vehicles are dangerous and reflect growing police aggression against the public. Police Commissioner Andy Jung, who's retiring on Monday, isn't like London's Mayor Boris Johnson, who says he's happy to stand in front of one of these cannons to testify to their safety. But Jung did defend the purchase and said the weapons are less harmful than batons and pepper spray when dispersing crowds. These are images from various countries of police using water cannon to disperse protesters. 
sometimes at potentially lethal pressure, sometimes together with tear gas. This all seems far from Hong Kong. But if the police and authorities have their way, that won't be the case for long. The government plans to import three water cannon at a total cost of $27 million. The police have not openly said that the move was triggered by Occupy Central or other umbrella movement protests, but they do claim that water cannons can reduce injury by creating a distance between protesters and the police. But there are other risks. The aftermath of Taiwan's second presidential election in 2000 saw the deployment of water cannon against thousands of protesters. This election brought an end to decades of Kuomintang control. Crowds gathered outside the presidential palace and KMT party headquarters to demand the resignation of its leader. Edmund Chang was shooting photos for a local newspaper when the high-pressure water was turned on him. a mathematician, Ding helped Concern Group civil rights observer calculate the effect with statistics based on the performance of a Turkish made water cannon. Water cannon can not only spray water in a diffused pattern or with a pulse. They are also capable of emitting a continuous stream at potentially devastating pressure. 主要是用一個水炮車 the United Nations has formulated strict guidelines on the use of these weapons and says that such force should only be used reasonably. 譬如說小威人士 
In response to a question from the Post, a Hong Kong police statement says that they will provide strict guidelines and training for officers using these vehicles. However, in the absence of any public disclosure of what protocols will be used, concern remains over the potential for damage or injury even to peaceful protesters. Welcome back. Since the beginning of Occupy Central, the University of Hong Kong has come under increasing pressure. Beijing's representatives in Hong Kong, official and unofficial, have strongly criticised pro-democratic academics like Benny Tai and Johannes Chan, as well as the student union's publication, Undergrad. Matters appear to have gone to another level when the university itself announced a proposed plan that seemed to make an exchange trip to mainland China mandatory for undergraduates. I apologise unreservedly for my remark indicating that if students do not wish to go to China, they should not come to Hong Kong U. This formulation was clumsy and misleading, and I now formally retract this statement. The controversy began on April 17th when at a high table dinner held by the Hong Kong University Students' Union, University Vice President Professor Ian Holliday said the institution was planning to introduce a one international, one China plan under which all students would be required to undergo a learning experience in mainland China. Students were even more concerned about the professor's statement that if you don't want to go to China, don't come to HKU. Although Professor Holliday later apologised for his words, Hong Kong University students are still concerned, as they made clear to him in an open forum on Thursday, April 23rd. Actually, there are many students in Hong Kong who coming from mainland already. And for the local students, they have been to China many times with their families or relatives. So what's the point of asking them to go to China? We are seeking to develop really outstanding partnerships with, say, community-based organizations, NGOs, companies, to enable our students to have experience of, say, working in a business in China, working in an NGO in China, taking part in a project. In February, the University Senate endorsed an academic development proposal for 2016 to 2019. The proposal, discussed and endorsed by all 10 faculty boards, stated, by 2019, 50% of all undergraduate students will engage in at least one learning experience overseas and one in mainland China. We aim to increase this overseas and mainland China experience for 100% of our students by 2022. 他的字眼也是未去到說要好像副校長在當時哈利波丁娜說話要是compulsory Peter Matheson did send a message to students saying that there is no stipulation that learning experience in China and overseas will be compulsory or become part of the graduation requirement for all undergraduates. The HKU Students' Union is asking the university to make the whole proposal document public. Professor Holliday says it's confidential. Professor Holliday是在他的披露的ADP的部分內裏面 of Hong Kong's higher educational institutions have to provide an academic development proposal to the University Grants Committee once every three years. The committee advises the government on the funding needs of the institutions. Its members are appointed by the chief executive. The HKU academic development proposal has already been sent to the UGC to bid for resources for new developments. Given that almost 60% of Hong Kong University's income is provided by the government, there are fears the proposed China exchange program is the result of political pressure being brought to bear. As long as Hong Kong is governed by a pro-Beijing chief executive, 
uh, he or she can always use financial weapon and uh, the, and the weapon of uh, appointment, okay, to squeeze an university that he, that he or she does not like. I think Hong Kong U definitely is under some kind of pressure, in, uh, in particular after the umbrella movement, it, because one of the leaders of the uh, so-called uh, the umbrella movement uh, was Benny Tai. Whenever they have some staff talking up a high-profile manner to uh, trying to fight for democracy movement, they, they may be, be squeezed. Ian Holliday says that the aim of the One International, One China plan is to allow students to develop a global mindset, plus a knowledge of China. As the Dean of the Faculty of Social Science, he proposed a mandatory overseas learning experience for social science students under the curriculum of social innovation and global citizenship. In that program, students had an open choice of where they could go for overseas studies. I 我覺得沒有人否認過,就是出去交流,或者其他地方可以學到一些學術以外,或者學術以外的東西,沒有人從來沒有人否認過,這個重點就是,就是同學有沒有自己揀呢? Hong Kong's government and its supporters aren't just paying extra attention to academics and their work at the city's universities, they also appear to be looking further afield. Among the latest targets for pro-government organizations was this small concert at Lingnan University two weeks ago. This concert, called the Dark Age in Social Struggle, was the finale of a week-long event called Democracy Trajectory in Asia, organized by the Student Union. The Union invited four bands to perform, one of which is from Lingnan University. While the Union knew one band was likely to sing a song using expletives against the police, it respected the band's freedom of expression and let them sing. The university administration was not happy. When I was, you know, walking past, uh, it was some kind of very quite mellow songs being sung. Um, so my impression is that uh, that particular song, which involved the foul language against the police, is only one of the many, many songs in the concert. Following the Lingnan concert, the silent majority of Hong Kong issued a statement condemning the student union. The Support Hong Kong Police Group went to the campus to protest and warned students to watch out if they were going to swear at police again. Members of the New Territories Concern Group held a press conference early this week saying the student union should be dissolved and police should arrest the students and the band for breaching the public order ordinance. It was in. It was in the context of a student concert. Um, so all this, it was the students inside the university uh, and also they were uh, I think the theme of the, uh, the concert was uh, resistance uh, or age of darkness. Uh, so the part participants in the audience knew they were expecting uh, some sort of songs which may have a social message. First of all, it's quite difficult to say that it was disorderly. And secondly, it's hard to see that it causes someone else uh, to breach the peace. In its written reply to the Pulse, Lingnan University says it received a substantial number of complaints about the song. It doesn't tell us how many or what the details were. The statement also says that the university respects freedom of speech but will not tolerate a similar incident happening again on campus. The university also issued an open letter apologising to anyone offended. The whole affair is an indication of how polarised relationships have become between the police and their supporters and many others in society. Protesters say police have been known to swear. During Occupy Central, local media photographed one officer raising a middle finger to protesters. The police public relations branch tells the Pulse that of 21 official complaints of police swearing in 2013 and 24 in 2014, not one was substantiated.
particular song is targeting at the police. And there's been so many movies, TV drama series, whatever, you know, in, in our popular culture that portrays an undesirable side of the police and other groups of people in society, including university professors, right? So are we saying that, you know, uh, we should ban or we should censor these types of artistic expressions? The latest estimates are that the final death toll from last Saturday's earthquake in Nepal is likely to be between 10,000 and 15,000. So far, around 6,000 deaths are confirmed, many more are injured, and devastation of the heritage and infrastructure of this already poor country has been immense. Aid organisations are moving in to help the 8 million people affected across Nepal, and they could use financial donations from members of the public. We'll see you at the same time next week. Goodbye.